Hi there, and welcome to this video podcast from Adept English. Today, let's enhance your vocabulary by listening to news discussions in real English. It's a while since we did a news podcast. I think the last one was 661 on positive news stories. Today, I'm just going to do a roundup of a number of items of news which caught my interest. You'll notice I don't cover heavy topics like Israel and Gaza or Russia and Ukraine. It's not that I don't care about those topics. It's just that if I give an opinion on them, then someone is going to be offended. And it's probably best not to offend your listeners. So I stay off those big topics. So these are just news items that caught my interest. This is an English lesson on a variety of news items to give you a variety of vocabulary, things that you can use in real life conversation. Hello, I'm Hilary and you're listening to Adept English. We will help you to speak English fluently. All you have to do is listen. So start listening now and find out how it works. Just before I start, a quick word in case you're missing our normal Thursday podcast. We've decided to put our energy into a new subscription service to make Adept English more sustainable and ensure that we're here for the long term. Do you like what we do? We certainly enjoy producing it. But there's a limit to how much we can give our time for free. And there's a financial cost to doing Adept English, which continues to increase. The solution? We are offering a low cost subscription service. So you get eight extra audio podcasts per month for a very small monthly fee. And we still provide you with a free video on a Monday. That's this one. We're hoping that this is a good solution and one that allows us to bring you even more quality content without adverts dominating our podcasts. I hope you'll agree that this is a good idea and I hope you subscribe, sign up for our subscription service. You know that your English will really benefit as a result. Here goes on the news stories for today. The first item of news which caught my attention and which amused me, Swedish group ABBA, that's A-B-B-A, wanting to ban Donald Trump from using their songs at his campaign rallies. Apparently, ABBA's music has been used at various Trump rallies without their permission, and they are not happy. Apparently, Winner Takes It All, Money, Money, Money and Dancing Queen were used at a Trump rally in Minnesota in July this year. I can well imagine that the Swedish group's politics are not going to be the same as Donald Trump's. What's more, a spokesperson for ABBA said any royalties, that's R-O-Y-A-L-T-I-E-S, that means the money paid to ABBA if someone plays their songs publicly, any royalties from music used at Trump's campaign will be donated to Kamala Harris's campaign. That makes their allegiance quite clear, doesn't it? And apparently ABBA are only the latest in a number of bands who've said they don't want Trump using their music in his presidential campaign. Apparently the Foo Fighters complained on social media that they hadn't given permission for use of one of their songs and Celine Dion's spokesperson condemned Trump's use of My Heart Will Go On, as did the late Isaac Hayes family. Late L-A-T-E means that someone has died. His song Hold On, I'm Coming was also used in the campaign. Isaac Hayes' family won $3 million for the use of this song. Also weighing in the estate of late singer Sinead O'Connor, who objected to the Trump campaign using Nothing Compares to You, one of my favourite songs. The family said that Sinead O'Connor would have been disgusted, hurt and insulted to know that Donald Trump was using her song. And the list of other artists, musical artists, who've specified the same, well, it's quite a long list. If you include previous Trump campaigns, Adele, R.E.M., Bruce Springsteen, Aerosmith, Queen, Rihanna and Black Sabbath, Prince or Prince's Estate, the Rolling Stones, Elton John and even the Village People, 
have objected to Trump using their music. Whether there is the legal power to stop Trump using this music is unclear. But I found myself intrigued to see the photograph of the ABBA foursome. I hadn't seen Agnita for some time. They're now all in their 70s and very recognisable and they look very good, I'm pleased to say. Next news item. I've discussed the bans on smoking in the UK before, and in particular in podcast 737 recently, Rishi Sunak's policy to ban people under a certain age from ever being able to purchase tobacco. My son, age 16, is the last generation of people who will ever be able to buy tobacco products. That's a radical idea, isn't it? Well, new Prime Minister Sir Keir Starmer is weighing in on the act too. He's talking about further bans on smoking. Smoking was banned inside public spaces in the UK some years ago. And actually, this has had a really beneficial effect. It was a good idea, in other words. Staff working in bars and restaurants no longer have to breathe in smoke during their working day. And the overall number of smokers reduced in response to this measure. Well, Sir Keir Starmer wants to take things even further. He's talking about banning people from smoking outside the pub, even in the pub garden, even in the fresh air. It's not been fully set out, but smoking could be banned in pub gardens, outdoor restaurants and outside hospitals and sports grounds. People concerned about health are welcoming this move, but those in the hospitality industry are not. That word is hospitality, H-O-S-P-I-T-A-L-I-T-Y bit like hospital. But at its basic level, that word means a warm welcome and the good care that you offer your guests. People who come to your house could be said to enjoy your hospitality. So the hospitality industry means restaurants, pubs, bars, and the art of welcoming people into these spaces. So understandably, the hospitality industry are concerned about this measure. I'm rather on the fence, as we say in English. Another phrase, I'm in two minds. I'm undecided about this one. I can see both sides. On the one hand, I'm very much for personal choice and personal freedom. If you want to smoke, then that's your choice as an adult, as long as I'm not having to breathe your smoke with you, which inevitably would happen if I'm inside a pub and you're smoking. But maybe it's a different matter in the open air, outside. However, The other side of it, one of my very happy memories from this summer is my trip to Switzerland with four of my old school friends. Or should I say my friends who have been friends of mine for a long time? Maybe that's a better way to put it. So on our long weekend in Switzerland, we ate out for lunch in a number of restaurants. On one occasion, a woman at the next table, this is in the centre of Lausanne, was chain smoking. That means smoking one cigarette after another. Very strong smelling, long brown cigarettes. And her cigarette smoke was drifting across our table. On that occasion, I felt as though I'd smoked a pack of ten with my lunch. If they still do packs of ten, that is. So outside smoking, I think, is okay as long as it's done considerately with consideration for other people and you don't impose your cigarette smoke on others, especially not when they're eating. Another definitely negative news story, the terrorist threat recently at a Taylor Swift concert in Vienna. Apparently, the American CIA, the Central Intelligence Agency, have said that they prevented a terrorist plot, a plot is a plan, to attack the audience at a Taylor Swift concert. A quote from the BBC News article said, three male teenage suspects were arrested in connection with the foiled attacks, allegedly inspired by the Islamic State group. Foiled there means it was stopped, it was prevented from happening. Their pledge was to kill as many people as possible at this concert, which was planned to be attended by 200,000 people. That's a lot. And the plans made by the three were said to be advanced. There were meant to be three concerts in the Austrian capital, Vienna, 
But because of the CIA information, working with the Austrian authorities, the first concert was cancelled on the 7th of August, the day before it was due to be staged. Well, a great thing that the plot was foiled and the three people were arrested. But it is disturbing to think that there are people around who have this sort of intention. And what is it with Taylor Swift? and her fans. The Southport attack in the UK, where three little girls were killed and which sparked the riots, was a Taylor Swift-inspired dance class. That one wasn't terrorism-related, of course, but the action of an individual with severe mental health problems, despite what was circulated on social media. But to target Taylor Swift fans, or Swifties as they're known, you couldn't get a softer, more vulnerable target than that, could you? And it makes you think there is evil in the world. The last news item which I thought was interesting, have you heard about the cruise ship which has been stuck in the port at Belfast for three months? Going on a cruise, that's C-R-U-I-S-E, it's both a noun and a verb. It means going on a luxurious voyage or trip on a ship. And you might associate cruise holidays with elderly people. But the round the world cruises, which of course cost quite a lot of money, lots of younger people go on those and they can last a long time. For instance, a whole year or in this case, a whole three years. Apparently, this cruise ship has been stuck in Belfast, the northern Irish capital, for three months. The ship is confusingly called Villa V Residences. Presumably the V is V-I-E, meaning life in French. So maybe it's Villa V Residence. And the ship has problems with its rudder. That's R-U-D-D-E-R, the bit that steers the ship and its gearbox. The passengers who are generally wealthy and come from all over the world are proving remarkably stoic and are just living on the ship and spending their days in the city of Belfast and unexpectedly enjoying what it has to offer. One American lady travelling with her cat commented that all the usual meals and the entertainment are provided. So it's just like cruising, except we don't leave the dock. She said that the rainy Irish weather had come as something of a shock. Not sure where in the state she lives, but obviously somewhere sunny. Another couple from Nicaragua also due to travel the cruise, have used the opportunity of a base in Belfast to tour in Europe. They visited Spain, all sorts of places in England and Greenland. One half of the couple commented, we've eaten in every restaurant and had a Guinness in every pub. He said it's all just part of the adventure. What a stoic attitude, I thought. And how well people have adjusted and made the most of the delay. I guess if you've lots of money and no place to be because you're about to go on a long cruise, it's just an extension to your holiday and you make the most of it. But still refreshing to hear this instead of constant moaning and complaining, which you might get in some circumstances. Anyway, that's my news roundup from last week. I hope you enjoy it and it gives you some new vocabulary to practice with. Don't forget to listen a number of times so that your brain has chance to really learn those new words. Enough for now. Have a lovely day. Speak to you again soon. Goodbye. Thank you so much for listening. Please help me tell others about this podcast by reviewing or rating it. And please share it on social media. You can find more listening lessons and a free English course at adeptenglish.com. 